if you finally realize that physical gaming is the way to go, you're probably in the market for a new gaming console. Let me break it down for you. Now, Xbox is the first half of the console war, and unfortunately, they lost the most crucial battle, the Xbox One versus the PS4. I'm sure you heard the story a couple times. When the Xbox One got revealed, Microsoft seemed to focus too much of their efforts on making a multimedia console instead of a gaming console, hyping up the TV and phone apps rather than actually talking about how great the gaming console is for gaming. Combine this with the online only, mandatory connect for an extra $150, and no trading, lending, or buying used games. The Xbox One reveal was an absolute disaster. Luckily, Microsoft reversed all of these decisions, but it still leaves a bad taste in my mouth whenever I talk about the Xbox One and Microsoft. Don't worry though, Xbox does have redeeming qualities. First and foremost, Game Pass is actually decent for anyone looking to stay all digital. The game selection is pretty good. Most games are very recognizable compared to PS Plus, the, the direct competitor to Game Pass. Uh, in terms of price, Game Pass is on par with PS Plus. The lowest tier for both is about $11 a month with a small selection of games, exclusive discounts, and online gaming for both. The main difference is that PS Plus gives you access to different games each month, whereas Game Pass gives you access to a set selection of games. Now, in terms of consoles, the Xbox Series X is the most powerful Xbox and the main competitor to the PS5, and it has a huge leg up on them. The Series X has full backwards compatibility, being able to play games from the Xbox One, 360 and original Xbox, which is something the PS5 does not allow. To play games from every PlayStation console, you have to own uh, both a PlayStation 5 and a PlayStation 3 original, not the slim version. Another bonus for the Series X is that it has a higher raw power, which basically means that it's theoretically better than the PS5. In practicality, however, it may not be. The other main draw towards Xbox is the selection of games. You get treated with games like the original Doom, which PlayStation has not been graced with. You also get uh, series like the Forza series, Gears of War, and many other titles owned by Microsoft. While the Xbox certainly has some positives, the negatives may outweigh the positives for some. Remember how the Series X is theoretically more powerful than the PS5? Well, many gamers have found that the Series X has run games very poorly on the Series X compared to the same game on PS5. And if you're playing games that are on both consoles and that are highly demanding, you might want to consider going for the PS5. Another huge drawback for most gamers who also own a decently powered PC is how most Xbox games are already on PC compared to PlayStation, which has only a couple games on PC, with some of the ports being lackluster. Um, now, if this final point doesn't make you reconsider, you may just buy an Xbox. But stick around, because I'm comparing some consoles that are in a league of their own. One other thing to note is that Microsoft owns some of, not all, but some of the worst companies in gaming, and has made some of the worst games, like Redfall. Um, they own Activision Blizzard, which is responsible for games such as the recent CODs, so Vanguard, Modern Warfare 3 uh, Remake, uh, Overwatch 1.1, and Diablo Immortal. They also own Bethesda, with recent games such as Fallout 76 and Starfield. <laughs> Now, if buying a Series X or an Xbox One doesn't seem right for you, PS5 or a PS3 might be what you're looking for. And yes, there is some reasoning to not mentioning the PS4. The main draw for many people buying a PlayStation is the incredible exclusives. You get access to series such as Red Dead Redemption, The Last of Us, God of War, Uncharted, Spider-Man games, Final Fantasy, Ghost of Tsushima, Ratchet and Clank, and Bloodborne, and if that amazing selection of games isn't enough for you, I don't know what is. Now hopping off the pros for a spot, the PS4 is in a bit of a weird place, 
as you can only play PS4 games on the PS4, which makes sense, but it means that there is no backwards compatibility at all. If you want to experience all PlayStation has to offer, a PS5 will set you back about $800 redos. Don't know what that is in American, but it's on par with the Series X. To experience the second half, the PS3 will only set you back about $100-$150, bucks, which if you're buying an $800 console, isn't a terrible ask. You just have to refrain from buying a couple games and you'll be able to afford it fine. The PS3, as mentioned before, is the best way to experience games from the PS3, PS2, and PS1. It's considered by many the greatest console of all time, as it's very cheap literally anywhere, and it's really easy to mod. The community for anyone looking to buy and mod a PS3 is great too, as you'll basically be able to find everything you need from other people. Now another great part of owning a PlayStation is, at least to me, the controllers feel so much better than Xbox, which seems to be a controversial opinion, but I will stick with it. However, PlayStation is not without criticism. The crossplay is mediocre. Yes, you have crossplay on games that support it, however, Xbox has a huge selection of games that are crossplay only with PC, and that is a huge advantage for Xbox. Another major criticism I have for PlayStation is the aforementioned lack of backwards compatibility. You can only play certain PS3, 2, and 1 games that have been specifically remastered for PS4. However, this has been overshadowed by the insanely good PS3, which basically eliminates the need for this critique. However, it is a legit issue as many people don't want to own multiple consoles. Nintendo is in a completely different league. Instead of bragging about their capabilities of the consoles, being able to run the latest games at 4K 60fps, they prefer innovation. Super Mario 64 pioneered 3D games, the Wii with its motion sensor controllers, and the Switch doubling as a handheld and a home console. The Switch is the most powerful Nintendo console, with some of the best games that can only be played on Switch. Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, Mario Odyssey, uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons. The Switch has an amazing lineup of games, and it is best suited to family gaming, I reckon. Uh, all of these games are great for kids, or even just a fun time with a couple mates. Now, moving away from the Switch, the Nintendo Wii is another amazing console. It's well powered for its games, the controllers are sick, and it has another incredible selection of games like Wii Sports, Super Mario Galaxy, and it even has a Force Unleashed port. Even the classic Nintendo consoles are great. The NES, Game Boy, GameCube, and N64 are all absolute classics with their own collection of games that anyone can love, and their simplicity is a great way to get anyone introduced to gaming. Honestly, there isn't much bad about buying Nintendo. Although zero backwards compatibility between most consoles would be a huge turnoff for most people. It means that when you upgrade consoles, you won't be able to play them on a smoother system if Nintendo doesn't introduce backwards compatibility. And to play games from multiple generations will require multiple consoles. The other huge problem is how Nintendo seems to hate their community, shutting down creators who decide to mod games or do anything creative. I know that Nintendo is well within their rights to do so, however, most companies like to embrace a lot of fan projects as long as it doesn't, like, stop them from making money. Now if none of that sounds good to you, a handheld might suit you. Uh, with a wide variety of handholds, they probably deserve their own video, but I'll, I'll go over the basics. The Steam Deck and ROG Ally are both handheld Windows-based gaming consoles to play PC games. The PS Portal requires you to own a PS5, and you don't play games natively, you stream them onto the PS Portal. Phones are great for mobile gaming, however, they're rather expensive, and you should probably get a controller if you're going to play on a phone. And the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus and Analog Pocket are both retro gaming handholds. Now, if you've chosen what console you want to grab, you might want to check out this video about a hopefully upcoming game.